Hi, my crafty friends. Thanks for stopping by. I have a gorgeous die to show you in this video. This is from Spellbinders, and it's their large die of the month for March. It's called Kaleidoscope Floral Slimline. I love slimline dies. They're so much fun. And you can use them for your regular mini slimline cards or your A2 sized cards or even the A7 cards. First, I wanted to show you some of the club kits from March that I'm going to be creating videos with. So the first one I have to show you is the Clear Stamp and Die of the Month. This one is called Spring Gnomes. It includes two of the cutest little gnome images, as well as a lot of fun springtime images to go along with them. And then the die set cuts out every single image, as well as all of the sentiments. I thought that was a nice touch. Next up, we have the small die of the month. This is called Floating Bunny. And bunny cards are so much fun to create for your spring card crafting, but a floating bunny, this one is really fabulous. It's also an interactive card. You can make the bunny hold on to balloon strings or a swing, and he will float side to side. And here is the die I'm going to be playing with in this video. Again, it's called Kaleidoscope Floral Slimline. This will fit perfectly on an eight and a half by three and a half inch slimline card. It also has a lot of little extra dies to go with it, some florals. The florals here are layering florals. You got three pieces for that. Then you get some leaves and some more flowers to put on top of this die. This is an etched die, so not only is it going to cut out this beautiful image, but it has some beautiful etched details that it's going to cut into your paper. So let's get started. I'm going to be creating a couple of cards using this die set. This is what it looks like all cut out. Isn't that just gorgeous? So I cut it out with some white cardstock. This is 80 pound Nina Solar White. And I also have an eight and a half by three and a half inch panel here that I'm going to be doing a little bit of ink blending on with some distress inks. I want to create a beautiful springy background for this die. And I'm starting out with Wilted Violet. The Distress inks don't build up the color as fast on your panels as do the Distress Oxide inks. But I think the Distress inks are really fun to add water droplets to and add some distressing that way. So that's what I'm going to do with this panel. I'm putting down some purples and blues and greens and just trying to get a smooth transition between all of these colors. I'm using Mermaid Lagoon, Peacock Feathers, and Cracked Pistachio. And then I'm going to bring in some Salvage Patina. The blending isn't perfectly smooth between the colors, but that's all right. Most of this is going to be hidden by the die cut. And I am going to distress this as well. Here's what the die cut looks on top of that. Isn't that beautiful? So much detail to that die cut. So I'll put away my inks and I have some water that I'm going to flick onto this panel with one of my paint brushes. I'll allow it to sit on the panel for a minute and you can kind of see the dots getting whiter as it sits on the paper. And then I'll dab it up with a tissue or a paper towel or a cloth or whatever you have. I'm going to do this another time. Just wanted a lot of distressing on this. I haven't done this for a while and it is so much fun. So I'll let it sit for a few seconds. It's just fun to watch this panel, the inks activate. And then I'll dab it up again. I do it one more time off camera. And here is the finished panel. You can kind of see the distressing in between all of these flowers. It just looks beautiful. Next, I'm going to glue my die cut onto the panel, just flat with some liquid glue. I'm trying to get as much coverage as I can with my glue, just so it stays perfectly flat, because I'm going to do a little bit of paper inlay with this die. So I'll center this on my card panel. 
And then I went ahead and cut out another panel with more white cardstock. And I left it inside the negative space so I could do a little more ink blending. I'm using some sponge sugar on this big flower here. I'm just going to be ink blending over these two flowers that are alike. And then I'm going to add some picked raspberry to deepen the color a little bit. But let's do the second flower first. I wanted to add little pops of bright colors with this inlay die cut technique, as well as with some of the flowers I'm going to be gluing on top of this panel. Keeping it in the negative space while you're blending on the ink really helps to keep the little pieces in place. Some of them do shift around, but that's OK. You could also do your ink blending before you cut it out and just use the die as a gauge as to where to put down the color. But having it already die cut just helps you to see a little bit better where you want your lights and your darks to go. We'll add a little more picked raspberry on the second flower. This technique is so much fun. It does take a little bit of time, but I'm not going to inlay the whole die cut, just these two flowers. So I started out by using my tweezers and picking up the pieces and then using little dabs of liquid glue to attach them to the card. I'll cover up my inks so they don't dry out. Let's pop this first piece in. I'm going to speed this up for the sake of time. The pieces kept shifting, so I'm going to try my jewel picker. That didn't work very well. I think the ink was too wet for it to be picked up with the jewel picker. So the tool I ended up using for most of this was my good old all-in-one tool. It helped me to pick up one of the ends and then get a good grip on it. And I'll just use my fingers to inlay these pieces. All the shapes are very different, so it's really easy to see where they go. So I am going to speed up the video again and just show you this whole process of inlaying the first flower. I really love this pop of pink on this panel. You could do this with some beautiful patterned paper as well, and I think that would just look stunning. On the Spellbinders website, there are a lot of card examples of card crafters using this die set. And there's so much you can do with it. It's just fun to see everybody's take on this die set. OK, so let's pop in our last piece. And let me give you a close up look at this. Isn't that beautiful? I'll do the second flower off camera. And now it's time to add even more florals over this piece. And I'm using more Distress inks to color them in. I'm not taking the ink all the way to the edges because I wanted to continue with the white theme of this card, or at least the white edges to these flowers. And these layer up beautifully. And then you get two more flowers, a large and a small periwinkle, I think they are. But again, I'm just putting color mostly in the middle and leaving the edges white. And you can easily see where these need to go on your panel. The panel does have the etching already, so if you didn't want to add layers, of course you don't have to. But I wanted to play with all of the things today and just try it out. So let's start gluing these flowers down. And the result is just so magical and fun looking. These would look really pretty popped up with some foam squares as well to add even more dimension. You could even use these to cut out colored cardstock. It's a great way to use up your colored cardstock scraps if you didn't want to ink blend over these. So let's attach this three layer flower next. I chose white to go on top of it just to continue with the white theme, but it's so fun to see the purple and the green through that flower. Here's the second one. This one's a little bit darker, but I'm continuing with the white layer for the third layer. And then the third flower. 
The periwinkles come with little flower centers, a large one and a small one. And I'm just using white cardstock and attaching these in the centers. They look so much more finished with these little centers. And then I'm even going to add a bunch of leaves around the periwinkles. So let's attach this to a white card base. And you can have this be a landscape card or a portrait. Mine's going to be portrait because I'm going to put the sentiment at the top. My sentiment I pulled from a die set from last year. It's called Forever Spring Eggs. You get these beautiful decorative eggs as well as some sentiments that say Happy Easter or Happy Spring. For this card, I chose Happy Spring, and I cut them out already with some black cardstock. To make my sentiment pop a little bit more, I'm using a heavyweight vellum behind them, which I cut out into a banner shape. And I'm using some liquid glue to put these down flat on the banner. I'll attach this to the panel using a little flower at the top here. I'll press it at the top of the vellum. It's going to be kind of hanging off. So once that has dried, I'll take this banner off completely <laughs> and add a little bit of glue behind it. The background of this card is so busy, even though it's beautiful, it's very busy. So I wanted to make sure that the sentiment is quite legible. And here is a close-up look at the finished card. I didn't even add any gems. I thought it was just perfect as is. It didn't need anything more. On the inside of the card, I added another flower. And this I put glue behind as well to, keep, to help keep the vellum in place. I think it turned out so magical and pretty. I have to try this again on a regular A2-sized card. So I'm using the die cut that I ink blended over. I didn't want that to go to waste. It looks so pretty with that little bit of pink on it, as well as a piece of Royal Amethyst purple cardstock. I'm going to have this go off the top and the bottom of this panel. So I'm adding a little bit of liquid glue behind it. And I'll attach this to the panel so that both the top and the bottom have the die cut coming off of it. And then it will look more even when I have to cut off the overhang from the top as well as the bottom. I'm just dabbing off the glue that kind of oozed out from behind the die cut. So let me pull out my scissors and trim these off. I could even save that piece that I'm chopping off now for another card. And then as you see, I have lots of die cuts ready to go. <laughs> and now I'm just going to start gluing more flowers on top of this. For most of these, I used colored cardstock. And I even ink blended on some of them. But it's just fun to attach all of these flowers to this card. This is a piece of brushed silver cardstock, so it'll add just a little pop of sparkle. For the third layer, I'm adding some picked raspberry. I want it to be darkest in the center. And this kind of brings out the pink of the flower that I already ink blended over. I have a lot of die cuts left over after creating these two cards, so I can keep on making cards if I want to with all of these pieces. It's kind of nice to have if you're in a hurry and want to make a quick card. Let's add the periwinkles. I'm offsetting them so you see the white cardstock behind them. I'll speed this video up again. I love the look of this white die cut on top of this deep, dark purple cardstock. It just looks so stunning. I also add some gemstones over these two layering flowers. And you'll see that in the picture at the end of this video. I have a few more flower centers to attach. And now I can just flip this over and cut off 
the overhang. I go really slow so that I don't cut into my card. I'll attach this to another white card base. This is going to be side folding this time. I usually prefer the top folding card bases, but I had this one on hand, so I thought I would just use it up. The sentiment comes from the clear stamp and die of the month, and it's going to say, Happy Spring. I'll stamp these onto some white cardstock, just using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink and my acrylic blocks. And then the coordinating dies are really cute. They cut around each letter. I'll tape these in place and run these through my die cut machine. I wanted to add a little bit of dimension to these sentiments, so I'm popping them up with some foam strips and putting them over this pink flower. And then I will add some gemstones, like I said, to those two layering flowers. But here's a close-up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed this close-up look at the large die of the month from Spellbinders called Kaleidoscope Floral Slimline. All links will be listed in the description box below. I'll be back again tomorrow with another Spellbinders Club Kit project for March. Until then, everyone, take care. Bye.